Hello European Confessions, I am back with another episode. There is a message that I want to share with you guys. The message reads like this. Hello Brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post for me as anonymous? I have a story that I want to share with you. This story happened when I was still in grade 8. I had a brother, this brother of ours was living in the city at that time, but we didn't know what kind of a job he was doing. All that we knew back in the village was that our brother was so rich. But even though he was rich, but he never did anything like like to build our parents a new house or anything. We only had people saying that your brother is so rich in the city. So what he would do is that whenever he would visit us back in the village, he would buy us a lot of groceries and stuff, clothes and everything. But what bothered me was that if he bought clothes for my mother, my mother will then burn all of the clothes after our brother had returned to the city. Growing up, I thought that my mother was so cruel and evil because most of these clothes that my brother will buy for our mother were expensive designer clothes. We never understood why our mother will end up burning all of those brand new designer clothes after our brother had returned back to the city. When we asked our mother why she was burning all of these brand new designer clothes, at least she would have sold all of those clothes so that we can buy food and renovate the houses that were so dilapidated. One day after we had asked our mother, she sat us down. Then she told us this story. She said on one particular day, she followed our brother after he had returned from the city. And she found our brother sitting near the graves. He was sitting on top of a grave. When my mother asked our brother what he was doing at the graveyard, that is when our brother ran away. Since then, our mother did not get along with our brother. So we understood why our mother kept on burning all of those designer clothes that our brother would buy for our mother. When our brother would pay us a visit back in the village, but sometimes he would just return to the city without ever greeting our mother or speaking with our mother. They would just pass each other in the compound as if they were total strangers. So one day, my brother then returned back home and he said to me, I want you to find me a girl to marry. I think now it is the time for me to get married. He gave me one condition. The condition was that the lady that he wanted to marry should be an albino, nothing else, only an albino. So when my brother traveled back to the city, he gave me a lot of money. I mean like for the first time in my life, I had so much money. So my former school where I used to go and study at, it was about 10 kilometers from our home. Next to our school, there was this other village. And I knew that in that village, there was this other woman and she was an albino. So I went to that woman. Then I approached her as if I wanted to be friends with her. I started getting along with her very well until I told her about my brother. I said to her, my brother wanted a good, beautiful woman to get married to. She then accepted my brother's proposal. And the other reason why she quickly accepted my brother's proposal, it was because my brother had left me with a huge sum of money. He had told me that I should spend all of that money on any woman that I would have chosen for him to get married to, only if she was an albino. So I started showering that woman with gift. Whenever she would complain that at their homestead they had no food or anything, I would just give her money so that she can go and buy groceries for her and her child. That woman, she had been married before, but she had gotten divorced from her husband. So with all the money that I was showering her with, she had no choice but to accept my brother's proposal, thinking that if she get married to my brother, 
everything was going to be well with him. After some time, my brother then came back to the village. Then they met each other. They started to date. My brother then returned back to the city. After that, he never came back to the village. That woman then got sick and she eventually died. This was after one year. So after my brother had returned back to the city, that woman eloped and that woman came to our house. She told our mother that she had fallen pregnant for our brother. Then our mother then took her in as her new daughter-in-law, thinking that our brother was going to quickly return if he heard the news that there was another woman who was claiming that he had impregnated her. But to our surprise, whenever we would call our brother, he would just say, Next week I am going to be coming. Tomorrow I am going to be coming. But our brother never returned back to the village. Before that woman had died, she called me into the room where she was sleeping. Then she said, sit down. There is something that I want to tell you. So she told me everything that had happened between her and my brother. She said, on this other day, my brother went to her house. Then my brother asked her, if she wanted to go with him on a picnic you know like in the villages if you just want to go out with your girl you can just go into the forest and you can have your picnic there that is where they went with my brother so that they can just relax so while least they were on their date she said that she was on her period and after she had eaten the food that my brother had bought for her she didn't remember what happened but she said when she woke up, that is when she realized that my brother had had sexual intercourse with her despite her being on her periods. After that, they went back home. That is when she realized that she was no longer wearing the underwear that she had been wearing when she went on a date with my brother. She was wearing a brand new underwear. After she saw that she was wearing a brand new underwear, which she didn't know where she had gotten it from, she confronted my brother, but my brother refused. Then my brother just left in the middle of the night. Then he returned back to the city. After that, that is when this woman fell sick. And as I explained earlier, she died after one year, but my brother didn't even visit her. Even when she heard that this woman had died and she died in our home, we told him that he had to come back when his wife died, but he just kept on postponing, saying that he was going to come, but he never came. He only came after some time when we had forgotten about everything that had happened. That is when our brother returned back from the city. And he then asked us to show him where we had buried his wife. We went there, but to our surprise, our brother cried so much throughout the night. But he knew everything that had happened to his wife. Even the very first day when our brother's new wife came, as he was telling us that it was our brother, who had given her the pregnancy that she was carrying. Our mother called our brother, but he just postponed but on that night when we went with him to that grave site where that albino woman was buried that is when our brother started screaming and crying throughout the night as if this was new news to him after that night he went on to marry another woman and he went back to the city now when we are counting the years it has been 12 years ever since he left and he has never returned back again Dear listeners, right there was a message that I received from Anonymous. Then I asked one of our admins to give us a translation, hoping that you were able to understand this translation. Please let us talk about this issue in the comment section.